Hi, uh, today we're going to take a little bit of a detour in our development around Lyra and talk about some new features that have been released in 5.4. So in our last video, we upgraded our Lyra project from 5.3 to 5.4. And in exploring some of the new features that are released in 5.4, uh, there are two particular ones that I think have a material impact to go forward game design and development and will particularly impact the way Lyra is structured around animations and movements. Um, and so I'm gonna talk about one of those two called the mover, uh, but I also wanna make reference to it, to a great video that was already put out. So I'm not gonna recreate this video, but uh, Smart Polly put out a video and I'll leave a link in the description below. Um, it's only a few minutes, maybe five, six minutes long, I think, or maybe 10. Um, on motion matching in the animation blueprints. And he actually uses the Lyra animations and shows how easy it is to take the Lyra animations and the motion matching in 5.4 um, and restructure a large chunk of how the anim blueprint works um, and dramatically simplifies the translation of movement into animation. Um, so do watch that video on motion matching. I do think that is gonna be a critical change going forward uh, and how we author animation blueprints. The second piece of this is what I'm talking about now, this mover, uh, which is the start of the shift away from the character uh, movement component. So up to this point, from way back when to now, um, the character movement component is how you've moved a character through the world, particularly in multiplayer games where you had to have net replication and you had to have, you know, lag support and all those features. Um, this character mover 2.0 or, or mover uh, is Epic's start down that path. So this is very experimental, early release. I uh, wouldn't recommend you shift your game to it right away, but it is something to keep an eye on, maybe play around with, learn a little bit. It will change the way we, we, we code going forward. So you know this, uh, in order to turn it on, uh, go to the plugins, flick the on switch, restart your uh, editor. Uh, these are the three, although I think you really only need the first two, uh, but I turned all three on. And here, here are the key differences. So character movement component, CMC, which has been around forever, as I said, the first big difference is it had to be attached to a character. So it was hardwired between the actor, the character actor and the character movement component. Those two were hardwired together. Um, and the collision capsule had to be a, a capsule. So it really only supported sort of bipedal uh, characters that were kind of upright and basically human shape and form. If you wanted to enhance it, you had to go through some very custom logic inside C++, inside the CMC, and they had left a few bit flags that you could turn on for your custom movement type. And so it was very complicated and very C++ oriented work. Um, and so there was a lot of workarounds done in order to not have to deal with all that complexity, but it really limited what you could do uh, with character movement. The uh, new component mover, even though the letters are the same, it is the character motion component, um, which is very close to character movement component. It can actually be on any actor. Um, so it doesn't need to be a character anymore. In fact, this probably spells the death of the character class uh, as, a, as a class in the class hierarchy. As you can attach this to a pawn, and pretty much get 99% of the functionality of the character. Um, the collision can be any type of collision. It does not need to be a capsule anymore. And the movement modes, the two things I think that are important is one, movement modes can be managed in Blueprint uh, instead of C++, so that expands sort of the more artistic side and enables more people to experiment with different movement modes. Um, but they can be dynamically added and removed via code. So you can have overlap volumes uh, completely change the way your movement modes are, are functioning. You can add and remove them at will. Um, and then you can expand them with a combination of C++ and Blueprint. And so those are the, the fundamental differences between the two. 
Uh, whereas the mover, you can see, is starting to be much more genericized, much more uh, subcomponent based, uh, and it starts to break that hard linkage apart. So we're going to take a look at the zip line uh, that's been provided in the example content. It's an easy one to explore as it's a, a capability that the standard CMC did not have. Um, and you can walk through the code and it's relatively clean and simple, and you'll see sort of how zipline is enabled. So let's jump over and take a look at the zipline. So in order to understand uh, how the mover is working, let's take a look at the zipline that's released as part of the mover example maps. So if you have enabled those plugins, the mover example content, and then the maps folder, you can open up the character movement basics and that will load this uh, level here and in where you can test out mover in a variety of different uh, scenarios. And then over in this corner, they have a zip line set up. And so what we're gonna do is we're going to, again, inside this map, we'll hit play. And if you move over here, you'll see zip line, jump and press E extended pawn is required. And so in order to turn your pawn into the extended pawn, this is currently the normal pawn. The extended pawn can be turned on by going into this volume and you'll become green. So if we go up here, now we're green. We are the extended pawn. You see our keyboard settings to the left. They're gonna disappear in a minute. Uh, but now when we go over to the zip line, position our character appropriately, press jump and E, they'll ride the zip line. So I haven't figured out if I can get at it from the top. So I can't jump up there. So this looks like it's a one-way zip line. And it looks like you have to be pretty close to get on it. There we go. So that's using the new mover. So let's take a look at how that is triggered and enabled on the pawn. If we look at the two pawn classes that are in the example content, the uh, Manny pawn, which is the basic pawn, and then the extended pawn. First thing to note, even though they are using a capsule, if you go into the C++ code for the mover example, they are based on pawn, not character. So it goes pawn, mover example character, and then these blueprints. And in the standard, uh, pawn, you see the character motion component here. And then on the properties of that, you'll see under the mover section, how the basic character is set up and you'll see the walking, falling and flying being mapped to these mover modes here in, uh, walking, falling, flying, the startup you start in falling state and then down at the bottom here, you'll see under shared settings, this common legacy movement settings, which appears to be how they're tying the consistency between the old CMC settings and the new mover. So right now they've got a class called common legacy mover settings where you have your ground speed, your step height, etc., that are coming uh, that are matching the CMC component. Um, and so that's the standard class and you can, you can peruse those settings and those classes uh, to learn more. And then if you look at the extended pawn, um, you'll see a couple of additional things. So when you look at the extended pawn, you see the same modes, but now we have zip line as being added. This pawn has zip lining and you have some parameters under zip line. So the zip line expands and you have some parameters that are specific to the zip line. Um, and you can see here the transition from zip lining at the end of zip lining, you will exit into falling mode. And these seem to be string matches to these strings. So you'll note that the string names here are being used uh, in any of these string fields. I'm sure they will change to something later. They probably won't stay string, but they might. 
Um, and then you'll note here in the logic. So if I look at the, uh, where was it right here? Check zip line transfer. If the new mode is equal to the string zip lining, this one right here, then they're setting this uh, bull flag to be is zip lining. So you can see that they're using a number of components here in the examples that you can follow the logic. Um, there's that bull here. Uh, and then this is probably done in the input configurations to start that. If we then look into the C++ code as part of that, and you can find that under your engine build, plugins, experimental, because it's still experimental, and then down to mover, let's scroll up a little bit, mover, and mover examples. So under mover, you'll see the standard movement modes. So falling, flying, swimming, and walking. This is what Epic has coded to match the CMC uh, movement states. And then you'll see that the walk mode is based on new base movement mode. So they have a base movement mode class that then gets uh, a child called walk mode. And then you can go through this at your leisure to understand sort of how they're working through uh, that swimming similar big struck i think yeah there's a big struck up there also off the basement mode and then when you go into the examples you'll see how they've enabled zip lining with the use of here's the zip line mode so again a base movement mode that makes it uh, available in that drop down list and then they have a, an interface defined to get the starting component and the ending component so which components have to overlap in order to uh to trigger that. So if you look at the, I think it was under gameplay. If you look at the zip line component, this actor that's placed into the world has that interface assigned to it, the zip line interface. And then those interfaces get start component basically returns this cable attach a where this, this cable gets passed as the starting component and cable B gets passed uh, cable attach B gets passed as the ending component. So that is the right here, this point and right here, this point. So that's how they're determining through the combination of the interface, which will do the get, start, and end, then the movement mode and the transition. All right, so you can take a look at, this is where they set the auto exit mode, but you can basically look at on trigger, um, the mode and the interface being the classes that are the foundation for the zip lining. And just take a look at that. And you can see how you could add a whole bunch of other capabilities to that. So the nice thing about Mover, even though it's still very much early and experimental, is you're going to be able to more readily define a variety of movement modes that aren't as complicated as CMC. Um, so, for example, in CMC, if you're enabling gliding and swimming, uh, and falling, they are all currently, you know, derivatives of falling in, you have to manage all that logic yourself under CMC. Whereas here you'll be able to create unique movement modes for each of those, and then basically set the transition rules and the settings on your character. Uh, and then you have the ability to add and remove things dynamically through gameplay. Uh, as, as your game progresses, you can swap out your movement modes, uh, very quickly, very easily and tie them to actors in world. Um, and so I think it's gonna be a much better solution. Uh, it is the very first release, so it is experimental. So it's more of an awareness as you advance your own development at this point around 5.4, um, that likely over the course of 5.5, et cetera, we'll be moving away from CMC towards Mover. Um, 
and that'll open up a whole new set of possibilities for development. So hopefully that's informative at least, uh, keep an eye on it. And uh, between that and the new animation blueprint capabilities, I think you're gonna see a very big change in the way we manage our characters through the game. Again, thanks for watching.